Hi everyone, this is Jeff Moore from Google. I'm a lead recruiter here at Google and I would like to welcome you to our Hangout on the Air talking about Google scholarships, which is a really cool topic, a little different than what we normally talk about on this, this show. I guess it's a show. On this show and we're very excited to talk about scholarships. I actually have three of my colleagues here and what I wanted to do is just start off by giving everyone a quick introduction of their background and what they do here at Google and then we'll jump into the content and take some live questions from people out there that are listening. So. Um, Again, my name is Jeff Moore. I'm a lead recruiter here at Google in our Cambridge, Massachusetts office. And uh, I recruit engineers. And Azusa, we'll start with you. Sure. Hi, my name is Azusa Liu, and I'm a university program specialist in Mountain View. Um, and I work on student programs, namely scholarships. So I run many of our scholarship programs in North America, um, as well as some other student events. And um, if you know the Grace Hopper Conference, um, I work on that as well. Awesome. Stephanie? Hey everyone, my name is Stephanie Chan and I work on the university programs team as well and I am based out of the New York office. Uh, I work on uh, recruiting at a few schools as well as the UNCF scholarship and ACES scholarship specifically uh, and I also run the intern program in New York. Awesome. And Jenny? Hey everyone, I'm Jenny McCall. I work on the EMEA team, so that's the Europe, Middle East and Africa team as a university program specialist based in the London office. Um, I'm responsible for trying to develop our relationships with students and faculty for UK, Ireland, Denmark, and Netherlands. Um, and then I also run the scholarships for EMEA. And it's like dinner time for you, right, Jenny? <laughs> a little Wait. bit. Four thirty. Not too bad. Okay, just check it. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, I want to thank you guys for coming. It's uh, awesome to have a little bit of time. So, you know, basically, what I want to really do, you know, is talk a bit. Um, about sort of at a high level what some of our scholarships are, what we try to do, uh, and, and break it down regionally, I guess. And so, Jenny, if you don't mind kicking us off and talking just a little bit about some of the scholarships we offer in Europe, that would be awesome. Yeah, definitely. So we currently run two scholarships for students in the EMEA region. Uh, we run the Google Anita Borg Memorial Scholarship, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And the aim of this one is to encourage women to excel in computing and technology um, and sort of enable them to become active role models and leaders as well for others. And the second one is the Google European Scholarship for Students with Disabilities. So again, the aim being to help dismantle some barriers that may keep students with disabilities from entering into computing. Um, for the EMEA scholarships, for both of the scholarships there, each scholar will receive €7,000 um, and that can contribute towards their education. Um, and they also get a chance to come to the EMEA Scholars Retreat, which we'll talk a little bit about in more detail later. Um, and just to sort of, sorry, oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, just to give you a bit of an idea of sort of numbers as well, we um, actually awarded sort of 10, for our, 10 students last year um, for the scholarship for students with disabilities and 35 for the Anita Borg Scholarship, just for the EMEA Retreat. Awesome. And um, Azusa, how about you? And could you give us a little bit of um, sort of background and context around just Google Scholarship in general, the sort of the, the philosophy behind it? Sure. Um, so the scholarship program at Google began in 2004, uh, beginning with the Anita Borg Memorial Scholarship that um, Jenny just talked about. Um, it first launched in the, in the U.S. and now it's pretty much all over the world. And that was um, in honor of Anita Borg, who is a real visionary um, in technology and really did a lot to get things off the ground for women in technology. Um, since then, uh, we really saw the value of um, providing these kinds of scholarships for students who are underrepresented in the field. And so we've expanded from not just women, but to um, other groups who are underrepresented in computer science. And so in North America, we have um, several scholarships. Um, Steph mentioned the UNCF and ACES scholarship, and that's for African American and American Indian students. We also have programs for Hispanic students, um, uh, persons with disabilities, um, and women, like we mentioned. Awesome. And Stephanie, what sorts of stuff are you working on? Um, so for specifically, it's UNCF and ACES scholarship. Um, okay. Should I be elaborating on these? <laughs> So for the UNCF scholarship, um, we're, you know, we're pleased to partner with the UNCF organization in providing a scholarship um, to African American students in the U.S. as well as for the first time this year um, to black Canadian students in Canada. Um, and so the award specifically is uh, $10,000 uh, to U.S. students and $5,000 to Canadian students and this is just based on tuition cost differences. Um, and all scholarship award recipients will also uh, be invited to attend our uh, this year's uh, Google Scholars Retreat in Mountain View over the summer. 
And then for ACES, similar, Summer Police is part of the ACES organization. And um, we, uh, the scholarship is for ACES members. Um, you need to be enrolled in their, uh, their, their organization uh, to receive, again, $10,000 for U.S. students as well as $5,000 for Canadian students. And um, this is also the first time this year that we're awarding uh, offering the scholarship to Canadian students. I think it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, and um, again, uh, scholarship recipients will also be invited to attend our scholars retreat in Mountain View over the summer. Awesome. Cool. And now I know the reason you guys are here, besides you know, your desire to talk with me, um, <laughs> not, is that there are a lot of deadlines for these things. Mm -hmm. And the deadlines are sort of fast approaching. So Jenny, maybe you could quickly jump through some of the European deadlines. And then Azusa, yeah. Stephanie, we can break up the US after. Yeah, definitely. Well, luckily, nice and easy to remember. They're both on the same day. Uh, so it's coming up next week, Wednesday, the 1st of February. Um, so definitely fast approaching. Um, and just a FYI for all the students who are applying, by this date, it's have, you need to have all sort of material in. So that's the actual general application, as well as all the documentation uploaded. And to make sure that their referees have actually added their recommendation letters as well. It tends to be a little thing where sometimes they think they've done their work. Um, but by that deadline, we need to have all the information in. So 1st first, first of February. OK. And now where do they go to, to find this stuff? So you can find everything if you go to the google.com slash students site. And then that will direct you to the scholarship page. And then you can select the region and we'll break down the different options that we have. Um, and it's all online applications. So no, no physical things sent in the post. Mm -hmm. I'll refrain from making jokes about mailing applications. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephanie, do you want to talk a little bit about the US deadlines and the US sort of process as well? Uh, sure. Um, again, I can kind of speak more specifically to UNCF and ACES scholarship. Perfect. It would be better to address the other ones. Um, I mentioned earlier just the, the different descriptions for the UNCF and ACES scholarship. But in terms of the deadlines, uh, the UNCF scholarship deadline is March 18th. And then the ACES scholarship is for February 29th. Return that. Okay, so they have a little bit of time on that one. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And Azusa, what do you got over there? Yeah, so um, the Anina Borg scholarships for the U.S. and, and Canada, um, that's due on February the 6th. Um, the Lyme scholarship, so we partner with the Lyme organization for um, scholarships for persons with disabilities, that's due on February 5th. Um, we have a program with um, the Hispanic College Fund, and that one is due on March 1st. And then um, I neglected to talk about this a little earlier, but we just launched the Generation Google Scholarship for high school seniors going into college. Um, and that's a new program that we, we just put a blog post up about last week. And that one is due on February 20th. And like uh, Jenny What's mentioned. What's that program like? That's yeah, sure. Let me, let me talk about that a little bit. It's, it's a program for high school seniors going into college and tending to study CS. And it's a new program, um, different from the others, because um, while our other scholarships are one-time scholarships, this one is um, renewable. As long as they maintain eligibility criteria, they can um, renew it for up to four years or until they graduate. Awesome. And this is brand new. This is the first time we've done it? This is the first time that we've done something like this, yeah. Cool. Very, very, very cool. All right. So this is all really cool. And what I want to do now, <clears throat> we're about halfway through, if you can believe it, <coughs> our live Hangout on the Air, um, talking through the via Google student site, talking about Google scholarships. Um, what I'd like to do is get questions from people. We've got a lot of questions before this talk, which we can walk through. And we'll get some live as we go as well. And anybody out there that's listening that wants to fire off a question, just do the, the hashtag scholarship question, and we'll find it and uh, try to take it live. And so I think the big question, you guys have all kind of beat around the bush on it, but you haven't talked about it. But like, what makes a great scholarship application? Very different than a job application, obviously. Very different job application. But, but what is it that you guys look for? And I don't know, Jenny, do you want to start on that? What is uh, you know, maybe two things you look for in a great, a great application? Yeah, sure. I imagine some of these might be similar for sort of EMEA and the US as well. Um, but I mean, there's a main, couple of main things we're looking for. Um, I mean, all of the scholarships in EMEA are really looking for strong computer science students. So I guess the technical accomplishment side is big for us. We're looking for people who really um, have that sort of technical background. And also, I guess the second one, the passion for it. So it's not necessarily just a passion for CS through their academic background, but they've actually maybe gone out and done some other extracurricular, extracurricular activities that sort of highlight that they really are sort of committed to going in that career path. Cool. 
And so that, you know, really showing that passion is important. Yeah, definitely. The scholarship. Okay. Stephanie, is there something that you would recommend? Like I think, like, we def definitely also look for just how involved you are in a community. Um, and so depending on the scholarship, I know there are questions based around that. So it's really great to hear, you know, different ways that you engage with your community, um, you know, the maybe different student groups that you're involved in. Just a way to show us, you know, in addition to your passion for CS, just how maybe you take these things that you've learned um, and apply it to them and give back to your community. Okay, cool. So a little bit more about the, the bigger picture as opposed to like, oh, this is a smart person that we'd like to help with school. It's sort of a bigger, <clears throat> the bigger macro picture. Okay, cool. I'm learning here. I'm learning. <laughs> Azusa, what do you got? By the end of this, I'll be ready to apply for a scholarship. <laughs> um, another big thing that we look for is leadership. And so we really want to see that these students are um, leaders in their, in their community, leaders, um, you know, just in the organizations that they're involved with, things like that. It doesn't have to be formal leadership qualities even, but we really like to see that they're, they're proactive um, and people who, who, can, um, who exemplify um, great leadership qualities. And I think even more than um, grades or technical accomplishments, those are really, really important. But uh, I think something that makes somebody stand out is those, that leadership and that community involvement. Okay, cool. Very cool. And now, um, you know, one of the things you guys all, all hinted around too was, was references and letters of recommendation. And now is there, you know, I've probably seen a million professional references on resumes and for candidates I've hired, but certainly not on this side of the side of things. Um, so what would you say, and you know, Stephanie will put you on the spot, what's, you know, like what's the one, you know, best thing you can do from a recommendation or a reference? You know, who's it from, what's it look like kind of thing, just so people out there that are listening can, can really be thoughtful about who they get for recommendations. I definitely think if it's good that you can get a recommendation from a professor who can be able to speak to your technical background as well as your the involvement in the classroom. If the more they can speak to you um, as in terms of your classroom capabilities as well as your out-of-classroom out of capabilities, I think that would be a great person to go to to ask for a recommendation. And definitely, I encourage you to ask your professor early on so that they have the time to write a thorough recommendation for you. Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree with that point, actually. I think last year I noticed we get a lot of applications from sort of, and the recommendations letters will say how great a person they are, and that's brilliant. We're really pleased, but we really want to know, you know, what they've done, how they've been made a difference, how they stand out, or, you know, their sort of accomplishments, their presence in class, that sort of thing. We appreciate that there's probably some really nice people as well, but we need to see a little bit more than that in order to do a good assessment. Right, you really want some meat, right? You don't just yeah. want the fluffy, this is the best person. I love hanging out with Jenny. You want, like, <laughs> why do you love hanging out with Jenny? Like, let's give us something here. Okay, cool. And now, Azusa, I'm going to flip the question on you because this is what I do. Um, for a student applying for Generation Google, I'm guessing there's probably a little different, right? They're not going to have a professor. Is, is a teacher good? Do they need to have, like, a community leader? What sort of stuff do we look for there? Yeah, so for the Generation Google Scholarship, we require two letters of recommendation, one from a high school STEM teacher, science, technology, engineering, math teacher, and another from anyone who's not related to them who can really speak to their um, character and their, and their um, background, leadership qualities, things like that. Um, one thing, I know that some high school students have the privilege of being able to take a computer science class in college, and if that's the case, then they, they can ask their professor to write a recommendation letter. But if not, high school STEM teacher is, is what we're looking for. Okay, cool, very cool. And now, I know one of the other questions that we've gotten a lot is what, you know, what's an eligible major? Um, Jenny, you want to start off with that, just sort of what sort of backgrounds we look for when we're talking about scholarships here at Google? Yeah, I mean, we keep it kind of loose. We, in terms of both the scholarships and MIA, we say a computer science or a closely related technical field. Um, so we really want students who at least have a good proportion of their modules um, that are computing modules. Um, so there's a lot of overlap, and that's sort of why we leave it up to each individual student, because sometimes each university course or each country might have variations. So we try not to be too specific on the degree name, but just that the student really makes their own judgment on whether they count themselves to be in a technical sort of degree that relates to a computer science background. Okay. And Stephanie, you look for the same sort of thing for your scholarships? Um, yes, I'd say so. This is always be, um, we generally look for like CS, CE, software engineering, but 
as long as we see in your transcripts that you've taken coursework um, that's related to computer science, you are eligible. Okay, cool. And now, I'll totally continue to just shuffle the snow globe over here. If you know someone's working on their 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 PhD and they don't have transcripts, what what do those guys do? Yeah, that's quite a big question. I get asked a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, I mean, I understand that's just a part of the course. So feel free to just upload your master's or your bachelor's or whatever transcripts you have. Just your most up-to-date transcripts. It just gives a way of you know seeing what you've been doing and how you've been doing. Um, but we appreciate that you won't be able to do a current transcript. Okay, cool. Um, we're actually getting a ton of live questions, which is really cool, um, specifically from our friends in Namia. Jenny, I didn't know you're so popular. Um, and the questions are really around, you know, my 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 referrals or my references haven't, you know, they've gotten a notica notification, but they haven't added their letter to my to my app. You know, what what do I do here? Besides um, freak out and call them and be like, <laughs> well, your application, man, you're costing me money. Um, yeah. What's this the most professional <laughs> response to that? <laughs> this is definitely something that we're aware of that's happening, and unfortunately, it's not ideal, but spam filters tend to pick up some of the notification letters from our system. Um, so if you know that you've put the recommendation emails in there, and they've not, if you log in and you see it's not been completed, just have a chat with your referee, maybe get them to check in their spam folder, um, see if it's come through there. But if not, and you're really getting worried close to the deadline, um, you can go onto the website, get the email addresses, and just get them to send them direct to us. Okay, cool, very cool. And now, um, one of the things I'm actually looking to learn while we're on this call today is about the Google Scholars Retreat. Like, what is that? What's going on? Azusa, give, me the, give us the details on this. <laughs> sounds really cool. I'm reading the brief on it. I'm like, that sounds really cool. I want, I want to learn about it. Yeah, so um, actually uh, the feedback that I get from this is that um, the Scholars Retreat is one of the reasons why some people apply. But wow. since we give a background on it, um, it, everyone who receives a scholarship from Google is invited to um, attend the Scholars Retreat, which is basically a three-day network retreat, uh, networking retreat uh, at a Google office. So for North America scholarships, we invite them to the headquarters here in Mountain View. Um, we host them usually in San Francisco, um, and then bring them to the office. Um, they get a tour of the office. They attend tech talks by um, notable Googlers. They network with each other, as well as meet other go meet Googlers, um, and then ton of fun social activities that we plan as well. And it really is, um, the feedback that I get is that um, it's so great for them to meet other students just like them, be able to talk, connect with each other, um, uh, start up opportunities to collaborate, and it really is just, um, just a great time for them. And now is there a European version of this too, Jenny, or is it a global event? Yeah, definitely. Though I imagine some of them would probably love to go to Mountain View. We actually bring them a little bit closer to Zurich, um, which is our engineering um, headquarters in Europe. So it's, it's really similar to the US in terms of it's about bringing together um, all of the scholarship recipients as well as some of the finalists for the Anita Borg scholarship. Um, and it's two and a half, three days of just getting to meet lots of other similar minded people as themselves and as well meet lots of Google engineers. Um, there's actually a really cool video that we did from the retreat in EMEA last year that you can see on the Google um, YouTube page. And if you just look, which on one the is it? The Life at Google? Yeah, I think it shows up on that one. Um, and you can see sort of there's a tram tour and there's lots of different social activities as well, as well as the sort of words out the mouth of the students that attended. So you can get their opinion. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, we've got another live question that Stephanie. I'm going to throw at you because you got off the hook on that last one. Um, <laughs> All right. And the question is that, you know, my application says that I need to provide a 2012-2013 enrollment confirmation. I only have confirmation for 2011-2012. What, what do I do? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, generally for our scholarships, we are going to look that you are enrolled full-time for the next academic year. Um, so definitely encourage you to try and go to your school and try and get confirmation of that um, because, and especially with the organizations that we partner with, they are going to look for that as well. Okay. Um, you can always email um, our alias, um, which is posted on the scholarships website, so if you have any specific questions around that, feel free to email us and we can, we can answer your question there. I think sometimes that can be a problem more in EMEA as well, just because of the different academic schedules. Um, so a lot of people might have, they don't all fall on the same sort of September to July. Um, so if you really are struggling, we will accept a letter of support from a professor as well, just confirming that you are going to still be there studying for the next year. Okay, cool. 
So there are ways around it. I mean, we have to yeah. get that data, but okay, cool. Um, awesome. This is fun. I'm learning a lot. This is good. One thing we haven't talked about, and I don't know who to direct this at, so I'm just going to rambly, just sort of randomly throw it out there. Um, what about other regions like, you know, APAC, Africa? I mean, what, what other, do we have other scholarships targeted to other places in the world besides Europe and the U.S.? And sort of how do people find out about that? Sure, I can take that one. Um, scholarship awesome. programs are, are global. We have scholarships all around the world. And if you go to google.com slash jobs slash students slash scholarships, that's a mouthful, <laughs> <laughs> jobs slash students, um, you'll, you'll come to a page where it'll direct you to different regions um, and wherever you're at, um, just click on the region that you're in and you'll see scholarships that you'll be eligible to apply for. Okay, awesome. And cool. The thing you should probably mention as well is that, um, and I imagine this is the same for all the regions, the biggest thing that we find at the scholars retreat and when we actually get to speak to the successful scholars is they just never thought they were going to apply. They just didn't think they'd be worth applying. They didn't think they'd ever have a chance of getting it. So just really, it is sort of worth a shot. So um, just trying to make sure that, I guess, students are aware that um, there's lots of opportunities. Um, there's lots of different scholarships. And ultimately, someone's got to get it. So unless you apply, you don't have a chance. <laughs> right, absolutely. Plus okay. one of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to have post-it notes. We could hold up with a little. Um, awesome. So, okay, so we're just about done with our live hangout on the air talking about Google scholarships. And I basically want to end this because what I like doing with these conversations is ha give, having stuff that people that are listening or watching the video later can, can really take away. So I want each one of you guys, so think fast, to give me one, one piece of advice that you would tell someone who's, you know, waffling or thinking about it on how they should, you know, what they can do to improve their chances and get a Google scholarship. And Stephanie, we'll start with you, just to put you on the spot. <laughs> well, again, it's kind of to reiterate what um, Danny was saying earlier is to really just, you know, just take advantage of this opportunity and apply. Like, the first step is really to apply. Um, you never know. Um, and we review everything on a case-to-case -case basis. And so definitely take the chance and apply. And then from there, um, you know, just really think about what would give us a thorough uh, overview of your passion for CS, and then again, your community involvement and your leadership um, involvement as well. I think the more we can see the, your overall um, just an over, overview of um, what you're involved with, um, the, the better <laughs> your application will look on our end. Awesome. Jenny, what do you got? <laughs> I guess then um, just I'd probably suggest students take a look again at the videos I mentioned before. Um, we've actually had two now, and one talks a bit more about the scholarships, and one focuses more on the actual retreat itself. And I think a combination of both will be able to give students a kind of good insight into what it's actually all about, um, and get a chance to hear from previous recipients themselves, sort of what it really is, and just make a decision. Because I think sometimes you, when you see it from someone who's in your, you know, in the same boat as you, it's a bit more realistic rather than just being a big dream. Um, so I think just as, you know, as we've said, just give it a go. And I think just um, take a look at the application. It's not as daunting as it sounds. You have to do three essays, but they're not essays. It's more like sort of a technical report. Don't be too daunted and just give it a shot. Essays. I guess <laughs> we missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, hit that for me. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, Azusa, besides do all of your essays, what? One piece of advice. <laughs> actually, what I was gonna give advice on was was the essays part. Um, that that actually is, I mean, I, you know, for me um, and many of the reviewers who look at that application, I mean, you know, we look at everything, you know, from your transcripts and your resumes and things like that. But really, the essays are what's going to stand you apart from other people because that's that personal voice that you have, and it, you know, trust me, it's really easy to tell if you put in thought and effort into your essay. Um, it's easy to tell those people apart from those who just kind of throw something together. And so please put thought into your essay. We really want to get a snapshot or, you know, just a more in-depth look of, uh, as to who you are. Um, don't be shy. Talk about your accomplishments. Talk about what the great things that you've done. It's really interesting how some people, um, their references might say glowing things about the applicant, but then in the essay they like barely touch upon any of that. And so really we want to hear from you. We want to who you are, please put thought and effort into your essays, um, and that will really go a long way. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'm going to add a piece of advice 
just because I haven't really any of this, this hangout. <laughs> um, you're right. Besides mentioning seeing seeing the scholarship stuff on this hangout, people should definitely mention. Um, I, I really think Azusa, you, you nailed it. As far as you know, what I think about is like this is your time to boast, right? Talk about those accomplishments. Get into the details. Really, sort of show off why why Google should invest in you, right? And help propel your education and get you started. And then when you're you know when you're a little further on, here comes Jeff the recruiter. When you're a little further on and you're doing that first resume, you know, put on your resume you got a Google scholarship, right? Sounds great. People are going to see that and go, wow. Google sent this person some money, maybe I should talk to them. And so I really think that it's the sort of thing that, that it's a short-term win, but it's a long-term win. And it's really going to help you help propel your career, especially early on when you're just getting started. And so that would be, be my tip as well. So talk it up. I think that's a good thing. That's something we didn't cover as well. It's not related to the recruitment process. You know, that we don't sort of tie them together, but a lot of people who are scholars or finalists will go on at some point to have an internship or a role here. And so if you think that Google could be a company that you want to work at, it's another great opportunity to help see inside. Absolutely. Yeah, it's huge. Another, another way in the door. Absolutely. Cool. Well, guys, we are just about at our, our end time. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This is our biggest hangout, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> and um, again, this is Jeff Moore signing off from our Google Hangout on the Air with Stephanie Jenny and Azusa, and again, thank you guys for coming, and hopefully you are flooded with applications. Great. Thanks for joining. Cool. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Have a good one. You too.